it's difficult to sort of summarize in from that point of view. I think the disappointment was, of course, that we had an even lower voter turnout uh, in these elections than, than last time. But, that, but it was a very uneven result because in as much as 11 countries, actually the voter turnout was higher. But in general, it went down further, even if it was not as much as predicted. I think what was positive was that in those countries and those parties where they tried to introduce a more pan-European perspective and debate, where they focused on substance issues, then voters actually uh, rewarded them for, for doing that. So this was a, a good uh, element. Uh, there was also uh, an increase, or we saw um, some really extremist and right-wing candidates being uh, voted into the European Parliament, and that is always sad. And uh, I think that the whole picture, it will be more volatile, it will be more difficult to find, as we've seen uh, in the last, um, during the last mandate, sort of this uh, uh, grand coali coalition, uh, big coalitions or, or big solutions uh, uh, between uh, the, the political groups. Uh, so I think that um, it, it will be a tougher um, five years to come for, for the Commission also to find the support and backing of the different proposals. Mm -hmm. I think when, when the sort of established mainstream uh, political parties do not integrate the European issues into their normal political debate and, and discussion and discourse, then it is easy, or if people don't see that they address the, the real problems, then there will always be room for, for the extremists uh, or the populists. And I, I think that you will very often see also as a result of a deep economic crisis that this can be the result. If people think that the politicians are not doing enough, uh, they will be more inclined to listen to, to those that have a very, very clear or simplistic uh, message, unfortunately. So um, I think that there, there are many uh, explanations to why this, uh, this happens. But I, I think the lack of a truly European public space where you can discuss these issues, where it is a natural part of the political uh, discussion, um, that is, that is uh, definitely one of the explanations. The fact is that um, the Irish, um, who are yet to um, um, ratify the new treaty, um, they um, uh, have announced that they are willing to, to have another uh, referendum and probably uh, the 2nd of, of October or beginning of October. And um, the, it has been a long, winding road um, to have a new a decision on a new treaty for the European Union. And this is because it has to be ratified by all 27 member states. And um, the background is, of course, that we could see that the, the, the rule book, the existing treaties, they are not designed to host 27 member states. They are not um, uh, effective or democratic or... Um, well designed enough to live up to, to the demands of, uh, of the times we live in. And we want to make sure that we can speak with one voice on the international scene, for example. Uh, we want to make sure that we can take decisions much more effectively. And we want to make sure that we are more democratic, inviting citizens, for example, to take initiatives. And, and there are new provisions of that kind. Um, uh, in, in the, the treaty. But um, we've had problems in, in uh, a few countries where through referenda people have, have um, opposed it and uh, it has not been very well sort of communicated in, in, uh, uh, in those countries. We already have an established uh, ne negotiation <clears throat> cycle and negotiations are, are going on already with uh, a number of, <clears throat> of, of countries. Um, Croatia being sort of first on, on the list. 
with newcomers like Iceland that um, has already um, decided that they would uh, apply for, for membership um, in, in the parliament. Um, and uh, of course Turkey. Uh, and that is since many, many years now that we are uh, engaged in a negotiation procedure also with Turkey. So there, there is already, and of course we hope that the countries in, in the Balkan area will become uh, new members. It, it helps if we have sort of a modern, effective treaty uh, on how to take decisions also when we are so that many member states, uh, even though it is not an absolute uh, sort of uh, uh, precondition or, or an obstacle to uh, continue. But the rules are, you know, not clear about what will happen then. I think it is part of, of, of debate where in some member states the public opinion is, is very negative and for many different reasons. I think that there is a lot of, I would call it ignorance, and I mean on both sides. We are ignorant about exactly what modern Turkey looks like. I think in Turkey they are also, uh, there is a lot of ignorance about what, what it would mean and what happens and how the debate goes in, in Europe. I think that there are a lot of prejudice um, about, uh, about each other, uh, also on, on both sides. And I think there are, and clearly, there are differences um, that has to be uh, sorted out. And, and there, there are provisions that have to, and conditions that ha they have to live up to before they can become members. And this is clearly uh, the same rules for any country. They have to live up to certain criteria about uh, defending human rights or the judicial system, how that works, etc. democratic rules. And, and still, they have uh, quite some work to do. But I am the w one among those who think that this is one of the most important decisions that we can take, and I'm, I'm all for it. I'm really hoping that we will be able to say welcome to Turkey as a new member of the European Union. From a geopolitical point of view, there is no more important de decisions we can make, decision we can make. And I, I think also in order to secure a secular democratic development in Turkey, uh, it's so important that we live up to our commitments and that they also do the work they have to do in order to be ready. I believe it is the European Union with um, including the Balkan countries mm -hmm. uh, and I'm hoping that Turkey will also be a member. I hope that it will be a uh, European Union that will have sustainable development as the overall target and will be the, the showcase to the rest of the world that it is possible to combine economic growth by environment, with environmental protection and social uh, justice and social protection as well for, for our citizens. Um, to show that it is possible to create smart green growth and um, I hope that it will be a European Union that does the right things, takes the right decisions, but also does it right. That is, um, opens up for, for citizens and, and works on um, the, the democratic development in the different member states. Uh, and um, I think we have all the, all the possibilities uh, in the world. To, um, to make to turn Europe into a place where sustainable development is highest up on the agenda.